After completing Italy, Dav resigns from his post at AS Roma. Meanwhile, the Valencia board are backing me, giving me over £90 million in the transfer budget. And I went straight to strengthen my defence, first off by trying to take Sporting's left back for around £15.5 million. As well as getting a bid accepted for a world-class Greek centre-back aged just 22 from Benfica, with scary physicals that I've had on my radar for a while now. But then, a dream job came up for one of us anyway. Because Jose Mourinho shocked the world, leaving Manchester United to take Dad's old job at Roma. And Dad was immediately on it and applying for his old job. As much as this would be my dream role, I was content with the team I was building here in Valencia. And Manchester United wasted no time bringing Dad in for an interview. And even less time to offer Dad the role as Manchester United boss going forward, which he happily accepted. And in the United Development Centre, there are some names that you may also recognise in Scott McTominay and Marcus Rashford coming through. But to improve his side, Dad put in bids for two attacking midfielders in James Rodriguez and Fernando Forestieri in attempts to conquer England in one season. And while that was all happening, I was signing Franco De Santo from Real Madrid as a long-term replacement for David Villa. Already, Dad suffered a defeat to Liverpool after a 1-0 loss in the Community Shield, however. But I was too hyped to realise, though, as I had the legendary Ronaldinho on my side scoring winners against Atletico Madrid. So, Dad, you've ended up at the Theatre of Dreams. Yeah. So, Trafford. Well, when the job came up, I couldn't believe me luck, really. I, I didn't expect it to be a, as good of a team as it, what it actually is, because I thought, well, we knew they'd lost a few players, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but to get in there, I mean, Rooney was definitely, I was really pleased with him. But they got a good defence there as well. So mm -hmm. when I looked at the squad that was there and the players we got coming through yeah, in the youth development, it's not a bad little team there, really. I know I didn't have a big transfer window, but when I put my squad together, well, my, my first 11 together, I didn't really need a lot. So, no. all right, it was only 19 million, but I didn't, didn't need a lot of money neither. So I'm quite happy with this. I mean, you had a big wage budget, so you were able to, yeah. to actually put the, the chance budget oh, it a lot just, higher. It just went up to, I think it was nearly 60 in the yeah, end, wasn't yeah. it? So. Uh, but we are, like, this is eight seasons in now. This is the ninth season, which if you're going by when the database was on, the 07, 08 database, you're looking at, like, we're 2015 now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we got Mark, you've got Marcus Rashford, like, in and around the youth academy yeah. now. So straight away, you're already thinking, oh, okay, we are not too far away from where we are in real life. So this Manchester United side, albeit they finished second place last season to Liverpool, it's still a really good team. Yeah. And you've actually uh, like brought in players which have improved that. Yeah. And some world famous players too. So let's have a look. You've got a tactic where you're going for a 4 4 2 diamond, and that is because you eventually brought in two players, which was James Rodriguez as the main shadow striker yeah. slash attacking midfielder type of role. What a player he is. Oh, definitely, yeah. Look at that. 24 years of age now, uh, 26 million pounds. Bargain, I think, for that. Yeah. Yeah. That is a bargain. Two goals in four games already. From Fiorentina. I worried, Dad, though, because when he was looking at him, I went, ooh, non EU player. And he went, oh. <laughs> don't have to worry about that yeah. again. That wouldn't no. haunt him anymore. Oh, Christ, I'm still having a nervous bringing <laughs> yeah. nightmares with that now. Uh, and then you went for Fernando Forestieri, who plays up front or as a shadow striker. Again, he's really good. I mean, that for that money, 12 million. What did 10 I pay? million? I paid 10 million from him in the end. Oh. That's a bargain, isn't it? Yeah. And he just sits as well. If if um, Rodriguez gets injured, yeah, there's the guy that comes in. Yeah, you also if I need a top. If I need a striker, this guy comes in as well. I mean, the striker wise as well. I am really covered with strikers, but yeah, it's just handy to get a player that can play that role as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, best eleven as you can see, we got Wazaruni up front, 29 years of age, in the prime of his career, uh, one of the best strikers, one of the best players in the world, yeah. really. Uh, and then we've got Alan Kardec, oh, who's is good as well, really yeah. good as well. Great yeah. finishing, head and ability. Beats your side trap, but he's also 6'2", with 17 jumping reach. Plays both feet. He's been scoring some goals for you at the start. <laughs> One. What scoring a goal for you at the start of the season. <laughs> so he's been doing all right. You've gone for a narrow diamond. They've managed to keep poor Pogba yeah. all the way through. They never lost him. Uh, and he looks great. Different type of player than what we know of poor Pogba. Uh, good ball winning midfielder on this. Yeah. Uh, Gerard Piquet stuck around. Yeah, he's only 28 as well. So yeah, and he's still there. Never yeah, went so to Barcelona. Got, yeah, so I know I've got him for a few seasons. Uh, and uh, he goes alongside... Virgil van Dijk. Liverpool fans are all going... Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Because can, Virgil van Dijk's in a Man United shirt. I couldn't believe my luck when he was there. So, yeah, yeah I'm happy with that as well. Uh, £69 million. They paid a naughty number for him from my Werder Bremen side yeah. when, I, when I originally bought him when I was uh, in Germany there. Originally from Sporting, my other team. Yeah. So, uh, they, that's what they've done there. They've got Philip Lamb in the side, who is absolutely yeah. incredible. 31 years of age now. Vidic is still knocking around uh, and still can do the business. You've got him there as an inverted fullback because that actually starts like a back three with Hargreaves just in front, gives Lamb the license to go forward. Uh, it's a good side. And for some reason, Craig Gordon's really good on this. Uh, I mean, I always look at my keepers, don't I? I, so, just, I just looked at that and thought, right, forget that. Yeah, don't <laughs> need to change that at no. all. But there's lots of names that you might recognise down the side. Juan Cadrado is on the bench that he can play all the way at the uh, of that right-hand side if you were ever to, to, to change your mind there. Some great players coming through the youth, youth system too. Uh, let's have a look at your start of the season, though, because... Hero was there as well, wasn't he? Yeah, it's not been amazing No, I was a bit disappointed, season. really. I mean, I, all right, I lost the charity shield in Liverpool, but um, I wasn't too worried about that one. But the, the I got an hammer in from Arsenal, 3-0. Yeah. Um, I think they've gone top of the league as well now after all the games we've been playing. But Chelsea, 2-0. Evident 4-1, I thought that was good. But then I got beat by West Ham. Yeah, 1-0 as well. Just when I thought the team was sort of settled in the formation that I was playing then. Yeah. I, I did try a couple of different ones, didn't I? So... I remember they picked up uh, West Ham, Henri Save, who back then, when this game came out, was the wonder kid to go for. I uh, don't know whether he's developed into that quite yet. They've only just bought him for £47 million, but he's had a great start to the season for them. Yeah. Uh, he was very good. So, yeah, it's been a bit ropey start for you, Dad. Two wins in the Premier League, but two losses as well for that second place finish. Uh, your Champions League group, though, is Hamburg, PSV, and Celtic. You should easily be going through that. I should do, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not, though, I'm not Benfica after Benfica again. Yeah. Brilliant, eh? Yeah. I set up with some sort of team there, didn't I? God, bloody hell. So they've won it again. I mean, I'm not after the Champions League, so I haven't got to worry too much about that. Yeah. But um, it's the FA Cup I'm really looking forward to in the league, so... Yeah. Hopefully I've picked a, a, a cup-winning team. That's what I really want. Mm. Well... We know where hard that FA Cup is to win, boy, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. Uh, speaking of cups, though, I've just come off the back of winning the Copa del Rey. So I'm absolutely buzzing, and my Valencia side... I think is prime for a title oh, challenge. You've got hell of a side now. Yeah. I think I've built a really good team here in the 18 months, even less actually, that I've been here. Oh, when did I take this over? Like, only like 10 months ago actually. Yeah. So I have brought in one massive player in Franco de Santo, uh, and as well as some really good talent. So to start things off, of course, Ronaldinho came in on a free transfer. That's a Great signing, even though he's 35 years of age. Goes straight into the team. John Stones comes in as like a good backup option, one for the future. He's only 21. Then I looked at the actual starting line, uh, starting lineup, and I needed good fullback. So Jose Gonzalez comes into the side. Can also play centre back as well. But going forward, he's a very good, solid left back. Uh, then. I mean, this, obviously, new gens come into the team, which are based on real players. This one isn't, as far as I'm aware. £49 million. That's one of the best centre-backs in the world. Yeah. By a mile, because he's 23. That's 17 for pace and 18 for balance. And, 17, and look at the mental attributes. That's one of the best centre-backs in the world. Yeah. Uh, I had my eye on him last season. Tried to get him in the January window. Couldn't get it because they wanted obscene money but he's down to 49.5 million pound Benfica just off the back of a Champions League yeah. win so Gover Golverinos comes into the side I'm really happy with that uh, a goalkeeper for oh, 2 million this was insane for 2 million wasn't it yeah that's already a better goalkeeper as well. I Not didn't, to mention as well, he is part German, which means he doesn't count as my, my, my non-EU player. A, I didn't have a job when you found this goalkeeper. Then you went, oh, he's only two million, he ain't bad. And then he went, oh, he's really good. Then you went on to someone else, and I'm thinking, I should remember that name, whatever team I get. With, no, as I'm if you can remember that name. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, Marvin Angulo came in from Lyon as a right-back option because I needed to uh, get better right-back and left-back. But then I had enough money left over and Franco De Santo with me thinking really that David Villa is still my starting striker. But he is 33 and he's starting to get a little bit worse for wearing physicals. He's still a finisher, don't get me wrong. He's got two and four so far and he even missed a penalty as well. However, Franco De Santo is the long-term plan for £68 million. It weakens Real Madrid. What? 26 years of age, he's really good. Didn't they, um, didn't they buy... Harry Kane? They did buy Harry Kane. I, I had yeah. a sniff at him, didn't I? But I couldn't afford him at the time. Yeah. I? So, as you can see here from Tottenham, yeah. Harry Kane, 
He plays on the left, the right, or as a striker. He's not amazing. He's not amazing, but he's only 22, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, I was I was in when I'm ever to get him in and train him as a shadow striker when I. Yeah. So I just couldn't afford him. The Englishman is at Real Madrid now. Really. I was, one chance I had of getting him, but I missed him. Yeah. But there we go. So that's the team that I have uh, built here in Valencia. And if we look at my best 11, as you can see, I've changed tactic because of Ronaldinho coming into the side. I think I'd be silly not to. Bringing him in as that advanced playmaker. Justin behind the striker. What a player. So buzzing to get him in. We've still got one matter on the left. We've still got Mohamed Salah on the right. And he has been injured at the start of the season. But he's played three games, got one goal. Front four, one you've player got there, match. Unbelievable front four. Uh, and Manuel Fernandez is still a really good centre midfielder. Albiol sits in front of my two defenders, which is now Varane and Govarinos, who's two really good centre backs. This is a title challenge inside. Uh, my 100%. bench alone speaks for itself how yeah. good this team is. Uh, my schedule so far looks like this. Now, I have dropped points, but it was a 0-0 draw against Espanyol. I've only conceded one goal so far, which was against Betis, and I was already uh, up in that game as well. So, a 7-0 against Levante, a 1-0 against Atletico Madrid, Ronaldinho scoring that winner there, and a 0-0 against Espanyol. I am on course at the minute for a very good league campaign, but I do have Real Madrid and Barcelona back-to-back -back yet again. Uh, I have UEFA Cup. That's what I'm worried about. You winning that one straight away. You, yeah. You've got a hell of a team. As should... soon as I seen yeah. that there was a draw for the UEFA Cup, I was like, oh, huge opportunity this season to lift this trophy. And my group is Red Star, Blackburn, and a team from Iceland. I should be going through. Yeah, the definitely. rest of the groups, obviously we know there's going to be teams dropping in from the Champions League. There are still some tough players in this group as well, in this uh, group stage as well. The likes of Ajax, Chelsea's in there, Inter Milan is in there. This isn't going to be an easy UEFA Cup, considering no. what we've seen but you've previously. Got, you've got to be one of the favourites. I think so too. So, there's a lot to go for this season for both of us. Dad's in a brand new country. I've got a league title and a UEFA Cup to win. Let's see how the season pans out. Das Manchester United may have started the season very well in the Premier League, but it didn't last long, unfortunately. Because throughout September and October, he went on unbeaten runs with many wins. Until a trip to the Etihad, where he took an absolute pasting by rivals Manchester City, 3-0 in what seemed to be a bad turning point for his side while sitting in second place in the league. Because December was not great with three losses and three draws. And job security become a risk after the 4-0 loss to Liverpool at Anfield. Meanwhile, I was having a blast picking up wins against Barcelona in La Liga with a fantastic brace score by Juan Mata. Even beating champion Sevilla 2-1 at their place with a very rotated team, might I add. But to top it all off, I won six games out of six in the UEFA group stage without even considering seed in a single goal. The only downside was Real Madrid was running away with La Liga. Just as Dad's league form started to pick up in January, Sheffield United knocked him out of the FA Cup. But he was slowly climbing back into the top four of the Premier League. After dispatching Lons comfortably in the UEFA Cup, it was the Bianconeri next in the quarterfinals. With De Santo being absolutely immense across both legs to send us through to the semi-finals of the competition, 4-3 on aggregate against Juventus. Only going on to face Jose Mourinho's Roma. And after we crept in a 1-0 win in Valencia, we went to Rome still hungry and took them right to the sword, scoring three more goals with De Santo picking up two more goals himself, and we walked into the final 4-1 winners on aggregate with Chelsea there waiting for us. And my dad was hating every single minute of it because he watched my Valencia side just score one goal, which was all we needed to lift that UEFA Cup. In the bag. <laughs> UEFA oh, Cup no. down. That's the one I was already up that you were going to struggle on, really. I just had a feeling at the start of the season that I could be in with a shot for yeah, that. You, I mean, the team that you had in there, you had to be the favourite to be in there, really. Yeah. I mean, I had good three chances at it with Roma, and I thought I had good team, good enough team to win it. Yeah. I you mean, my old team had a brown one at last year. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I felt like I was in a, in a good position for that. Uh, the group stage itself slapped it six wins out yeah. of six into the round of 16 knocked out Lons 11-2 on aggregate as well quarter final knocking out Juventus and that's a good win and then in the semi-final your old team Roma yeah bounced them out of this one as well against Chelsea 1-0 in the final and that's all I needed but I, I did say no my defence has been really good at the start of the season yeah. so it just continued throughout the rest of the season yeah definitely yeah now it wasn't the only trophy I won of course 
But unfortunately, I had already picked up another Copa del Rey. Uh, two years in a row, beating Barcelona this time round in the final. Uh, after extra time, Sevilla, my old team in the semi-final. How about that, eh? Not winning the league now, are you, eh, Sevilla? Uh, but Real Madrid, the, the, the round before that. Good result. Yeah, so I knocked out the three best teams, really, yeah. if you consider it that way. So yeah. I deserve to win the Copa del Rey. But... The Spanish first division was dominated by Real Madrid. Nobody was stopping them. I mean, it just goes to show that it is hard to spit them to or even beat both of them, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you had out of a side and to be, what, 22 points behind Real Madrid. Yeah. They only lost one game, so... That goal difference alone is I mean, 170. I mean, you look at your team and you think, where do you make your team better I know. to be better than Real Madrid? I That's what I'm really going to struggle know. with. I need to make like a... Well, now that I don't need to win cups, I can kind of like cater the tactic and stuff to just yeah. league football. Yeah. That, that really high attacking style that I like, yeah. which I don't like to do when I need to go for cups no, it because be. it only takes one game to lose in yeah. the cups. So when you do a, a high attacking intensity, you know, three up front or whatever it is, that's when you start to lose a lot of points, unfortunately. I mean, I lost seven in, in the league here by playing fairly conservative in a 4 2 3 1. Yeah. I mean, you look at the goals that but, they've scored as well. Yeah. I mean, I lost both only, times against Real Madrid. They only, they only conceded 19 goals. I know. That's mental. Yeah. That's absolutely mental. So, I mean, if you look at the profile itself, I didn't even have a top scorer in there. I didn't have anybody in there. Uh, my actual top scorer was Franco De Sancto. So, so if you think about the, uh, the what I actually used at the start of the season, which was David Villa starting off, De Sancto has actually come in and got 18 and 31 appearances, 25 starts in the end. So yeah, very good. he's probably now my number one. It was probably yeah. a good idea to bring him in. Uh, but yeah, there we go. There's a UEFA Cup in the bag, but that Do league... You know really far away you know the biggest surprise was that, that that chart there go back to the leading uh, the, the uh, clean sheets clean sheets Ego Akinfeyev Barcelona weird <laughs> Casillas only had 17 but he conceded oh he only played 29 games though right yeah but they so the other the other Real Madrid uh, goalkeeper oh, really he had 5 clean sheets ah right so, the, so Real, Madrid Real Madrid did, did as a team yeah, yeah. Uh, had a lot yeah. more clean Honestly, sheets. When I seen that, I thought, hey. Yeah. Most clean sheets, they had 22. I was third, there were 17. Yeah. But they dominated a lot of it. Like Most points per game, most goals, most shots. Fewest conceded, of course. Barcelona just had the possession and most dribbles. So, yeah. You got your work cut out, really. I mean, you've got out of a side where you've improved it. I, I know, know. I don't know. Yeah. I do not know. Uh, like, I mean, I mean like, 30 what you just said, the tactic though. could be different. Yeah. You could make that team better by just changing your tactic. Yeah. And now, like, I've got... I need to possibly look at a Ronaldinho replacement. He's 36. He's probably better off the bench now. Uh, Mohamed Salah isn't going anywhere. He is wanted by Chelsea. And if they want to pay 200 million, maybe he will go somewhere. Yeah. But 20 goals, 14 assists is, is absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, maybe I need to look at doing something a little bit different. My defense is fantastic. I've got some great midfielders as well. I think solidifying that midfield and maybe pushing uh, another striker up there might be the way to go and I've got £118 million pound to do that you've got more than that look at your wage budget as well yeah so I know you pay big wages options. for your team but yeah but dad the league form wasn't great at the start uh, well, however sure. you did rescue it you did rescue it yeah. into a third place finish I had joint, a good, second, joint second really. yeah. I had a good like I showed you I had a good um, second part of the season I lost to Arsenal 4-0 who eventually went on to win yeah. on the first day of the year so 1st of January I didn't lose a league game after yeah. that. Yeah, you only lost six games until there was yeah. that Arsenal four 0 You that had some a... Tonkins though. Yeah, I did. Yeah, lost to Arsenal four 0 and three 0 Yeah, four 0 at Anfield. The big, so. I think, the biggest disappointment for my season, and it hasn't showed you yet, is the the FA Cup. Yes, I wanted to do better in the FA Cup, and I lost to Sheffield Fourth United. Round. I was disappointed with that. Fourth round the FA Cup, especially was seeing what I found out as well that um, Arsenal didn't didn't win it neither. It was Liverpool. Yeah, it was a Merseyside derby. I felt that was a big chance. Oh, big chance missed for me there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I'm disappointed in one way, but I'm pleased with the way I've finished. Yeah. So I'm the same as you, really. I probably just need a little bit of a tweak. I don't know what my transfer budget was. Transfer budget. I don't know whether it's come through yet because it's 24th of oh, May. Right. Yeah. So that. I mean, look at the wage. Come through later. Look at the wage. So it's going to be a lot bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, goals. Goals wise, you know, yeah. This is where I was a little bit disappointed. Alan Kardec was your top scorer with 21, yeah. 17 from Rooney. Whit Rooney. And he only played 37 games as well, yeah. so he obviously Must took a bit, of an, a injury, bit yeah. of an injury at some point. 
Yeah, he had a fractured lower arm, so he was out for five weeks. Yeah. Uh, in a game against Arsenal, unfortunately. Oh, so and then he picked up a couple where he was out for. He a, got a bit annoyed and he, and he smacked him. <laughs> <the> yeah, <laughs> broke his arm because of it. Punched somebody so hard he broke his own arm. I mean, I've got a few players that I wanted as well that I could possibly get rid of. Um, to make the budget a little bit bigger for myself and then just sort of feed a couple of players in I think and I'm, I'm like that with changing my, my formation I might I might do I'm the same as you I, I do I do like a, a free up front yeah. when you're really going for the league yeah so I, I might even go for that if I can get it okay a good so you're group. not tempted by any of these jobs I definitely I definitely don't that want to go anywhere may not be coming up I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm, not, there. I'm not interested in going anywhere at the moment I've got a job to do in England yeah um, and I'm happy with my team at the moment so Neil Bath is the manager of Chelsea right yeah. now well, he's interim so maybe yeah. that is a job that you could have oh, no you can't I don't know maybe they've already got normally there's like one lined up isn't it when there's yeah, an interim I'm not really interested I mean the board my job was never insecure so yeah the board are happy with what I'm doing at the moment so yeah I'm quite happy as well all right, I think I'm quite happy. It's just going to be yeah. some doing trying to catch uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona at the top of the league. But there is a huge trophy to add to a retro glory hunter cabinet. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes, a huge win this season because the UEFA Cup is arguably the hardest trophy left for us to both win. And I proudly stick it in my retro trophy cabinet as we move on to season number 10.